Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello Day. We're gonna start this week out in Elite, where of course we got update 15 that brought both some good, some bad, and some, well, not very pretty at all. Let's start with some of the good things. When you're moving um, around this galaxy map, trying to find a target for your fleet carrier, it's no longer going to just accidentally set a, a target. You drag it around and by accident as you're dragging, you click a system and then it sets the target. That shouldn't happen anymore. So now you don't have those accidental fleet carrier jumps that's just because then you can't slip, you have to wait two minutes before you can plot the next one. It's super annoying. That should have been fixed. Awesome. Love it. Great. There's also been a lot of reports previously from players that there's been some issues with the SRV not interacting correctly around Guardian sites and there's some things not working out there. Frontier's been addressing that. So for those of you who have been having problems farming materials and uh, blueprint fragments out of the Guardian site, that should now be a much smoother experience. And for all you Thargoid hunters out there who will be all too familiar with the bug where a Thargoid goes invisible, where you can, well, you can target it and you can't, just can't see it, uh, it can still shoot at you. <laughs> you just have, it's really hard to kill a heart on something you can't see. Uh, so that makes it quite difficult. That bug has now also been fixed. Thargoid scouts have had their um, behavior changed. So previously, at, when you went to conflict zones, they would uh, just basically shoot at the station and it would just be like an environmental thing. They are now a lot more aggressive. They've also been buffed to do more damage and they now also hunt down players. So they're now actually a thing you might need to concern yourself with if you go to a Thargoid conflict zone and not just a scenic thing that you can basically ignore. Finally, probably the best of the quality of life changes that Frontier has done is the fact that if you have multiple fleet carriers in a system, those fleet carriers will now be collapsed down to a single object in the, um, in the system map instead of this curtain of fleet carriers that we've been used to so far. This is a super nice change. Um, so gone are the days now where you jump into a system, you can't see anything because there's just fleet carriers everywhere. That is now gone, they're now been collapsed down. You can then click on it, you can go to point of interest, you can then see the fleet carriers you've selected and they're like ordered and it's, it's nice, it's easy to use. Awesome job, well done, Frontier. Those are all really nice changes, but there are also some things here that's maybe not as nice. For instance, we had the, the new Thargoid Titans, we finally got access to the Pulse um, shutdown, or the Pulse neutralizer. It's not the shutdown field neutralizer, it's the Pulse neutralizer. Um, and we got access to the um, to the Thargoid, or the heart of the Maelstrom, the Thargoid Titans are in there. The visuals, the um, atmosphere, the sound design is, as always, spot on. It's amazing, it's really, really well done. Playability-wise, uh, it's very limited. Um, all we got in there was three new materials that can be farmed, and these materials have no use as of this recording. Uh, likely they are going to be part of a new module because Elite is going through the same phase now again and again and again where we are being stopped for some reason in progressing this whole Thargoid narrative whether that be a shutdown pulse or whatever and then we need to basically wait for, for the next patch to come out where we get the module that we can then go grind materials for to buy that new module that allows us to go and access the next step which would then be get into the Maelstrom and then we get access to some new materials that we can then use in the future to get access to the next step. Because as many of you will know, if you fly into like the center of the Thargoid males, or, or not males, the Thy Thargoid Titans, there's this big opening where um, Thargoid interceptors are coming in and out of. When you try to fly in, while that portal is open, you're just being pushed back by some magic force field, which is again, Frontier telling you, not yet. So my guess is that all these materials that we can now farm at the Thargoid Titan and when update, what's the next one, 16 is going to come out. There's going to be some module that's going to be like a Thargoid imitation module that's going to make you look like a, or from a scanner point of view, you look like a Thargoid and then suddenly we can move in through that portal and then we'll figure out what's on the other side of that portal. And well, if the, if the, if this like thing continues, then we get some new materials we can farm in there to get new modules to allow to progress further and further and further and so forth. That kind of cycle continue. You get one step further, you get new materials, you get one step further, you get new materials, and you keep going like that. But again, it's very pretty, it's very awesome. If you haven't visited a Thargoid Titan yet, I highly recommend you do so, um, as it is quite the sight to behold. The thing I like the least about Update 15 is probably the way Frontiers implemented these new on, uh, on foot missions where 
these Thargoids, uh, Revenants are flying around and they like have their light cones and they're scanning and try to find you and you're trying to sneak in. I quite quickly doing my live stream figured out that the best way to take them down is to shoot them down with a rocket launcher because you can one shot them. If you one shot them, they don't have time to alert their friends. And even if one of their allies like explodes right in their face, they don't care. Um, so they just move on by the day. So you just one shot them one at a time and then you can clear the base quite quickly and thereby removing the um, the sneak element. That alone is not a problem. I think that's absolutely fine that there is two ways to skin a cat. You can go sneaky if you want to, and you can go all guns blazing and fire rockets left and right, clear the base and then go in. Problem is, you can and then you can't really. After you clear the base, you will have a minute or two before a Thargoid scout comes in and drops a bunch of new ones, and they will keep dropping new ones endlessly as you just keep killing them and killing them over and over and over again. I don't think that's a great implementation. I don't get why Frontier has taken that aggressive options away from us. Fine if people want to want to go and do the sneaky approach, should absolutely be doable and should absolutely be a valid approach. But why take the aggressive options away? Why take options away by letting them respawn over and over again? It just feels it, it feels too much gamery for me. Um, like if we go way back when Elite first came out, it was much more leaning towards being a simulator first and a game second. But as the game has progressed, it's slowly been tipping the other way. So now Elite feels a lot more like it is a game first and the realism and the, and the simulation part of it is basically just if it's convenient, right? I would like to have that option. It's okay if Frontier feels like they have to respawn them, but then at least give us five, ten minutes before they respawn or something like that. Another thing that's changed in update 15 revolves around the caustic sink. Now, that was introduced in the last patch, allowing us to remove caustic effects and protect us against caustic effects. When it was introduced, it was added in as a, basically a variety of a heat sink, and that meant that all heat sink engineering would work on it. More importantly, also the increased ammo. This is probably the one people are using the most. However, with update 15, they have now been reclassified as an experimental module. Allegedly, that's supposed to be a fix. I haven't seen if there's been any announcements out whether this is intended or whether it's a bug. Um, from what I've been gathering, it seems to be intended. You could say that's fine. Okay, Frontier want to reclassify a module and, and make it from being uh, a heat sink to be an experimental. But of course, it means you can't engineer it anymore. Um, even then, you could say, okay, fair enough. But the problem is that there's a lot of people who've already engineered them. <laughs> and they have them engineered still, but you can no longer engineer them. That means all of a sudden we have a legacy module that is better than you can get new modules. And that is something that I really do not want to see in, in a game like League. We have these legacy modules that uh, that's better than the new stuff we can get, because that suddenly means that you're always going to have older existing players that might have better modules than newer players are ever going to be able to get their hands on. And that's just not a good feel for a new player if they come in and they say, oh yeah, Oh, yeah, there's this, there's this module, uh, you can't get it, um, but it's nice and it's better than anything you can get. I know a lot of you guys are already strolling out to the comment section now and screaming Cobra Mark IV at me in the comment section. And, and yes, I know, we also know that the Cobra Mark IV is not really good. <laughs> it's basically like a Cobra Mark III, but heavier and slower. You could argue it's slightly more combat focused, but... I personally would prefer the Cobra Mark III over the Cobra Mark IV, but that's a whole nother discussion um, with the Cobra Mark IV, uh, the only premium ship that actually exists in, uh, in Elite Dangerous today. Quickly moving over to Spaceborne. Um, last week I mentioned that uh, they suspended the weekly patch. Back then I didn't know for how long, um, because they were going to make this new bigger patch, they're calling it the 2.0 patch. Um, feels a little, I personally feels a little odd to call it 2.0 already. Like it's it's almost like it's the second game coming out. I don't know how big the patch is. The, the thing is we don't really know what's in it. We know there's a lot of performance optimization, new features, new stuff to play with. It is a big patch and probably the biggest patch the game's ever gotten so far. Um, but we don't know a whole lot about it at the, at the time of this recording at least. It's coming out on Friday. That's going to be the 19th, which is the same day as the Invictus launch week. <laughs> so there's some overlapping, overlapping things there. I'll probably have to wait until after the Invictus launch week to go in and get a proper look at it, all the new stuff that's been added. So it's last citizen I have a bunch of like smaller topics um, and I just decided to clump it all together into one by big mess instead of making like four segments, 30 seconds each, something like that. In Star Citizen, 
Um, there was the Inside Star Citizen last week where they talked about the new settlements they're going to add. They have 20 new settlement designs that they're going to be um, adding into the game with update 320. Now, the reason why these settlement designs is important is because they serve as mission locations. So a lot of the settlements that we use for mission locations today will be relatively small. Um, some of them may have a may have a landing pad, um, but a lot of them will just be like basically makeshift camps. So it wouldn't even consider that a settlement. They most of them will just be like somebody put up a makeshift tower and there's some boxes scattered around and a makeshift fence to serve as a perimeter, right? And that's basically it. Some tents here and there. That's that's kind of the, the level of things we have right now. But we're now getting full-on proper settlements and small villages, actual fortresses that you have to go and attack in order to either kill a target inside, go and steal something or whatever. On the PTU for update 319, um, there's been some changes to salvage. Uh, previously in other live streams, I've been talking about how salvaging guns was actually quite profitable and it was almost make up as much money as the salvage material itself. Problem is, a lot of people were beginning to just basically do the salvage mission just to steal the guns and not do the salvage. Um, so CIG's solution to this has been to just basically hard nerf the sell prices of the guns. You still buy them for the same price, but you now, instead of selling them at half their market value, you now sell at 10% market value. I feel like that is a poor way, way to solve the problem. I absolutely get that if you make salvage missions, they should be intended to be salvaged. And, and fair enough, if, if Frontier, if CIG wants to rebalance that. But I feel like there would be a better way to balance it instead of saying, uh, let's just like do it the, the, the lazy way and cut them the price, the sell price out of them, so people, they don't have to go and, and, and basically pick them up, but they'll do the missions for the salvage. I feel a better solution would be to keep the price at 50% sale price. I think that was fine where it was, but have some of the guns being destroyed on the ship when you get to it so that you get less of them. It also makes sense. It's a derelict. It's a damaged ship. Why would all the guns be functional? Uh, it would be fair to assume that a few of them were damaged in the, whenever the ship was destroyed. So remove some of them or replace them with a broken version that's basically worthless, that doesn't really sell for anything, uh, and, and then just... Balance it like that. I think that would have been a better solution to that problem. Um, we'll see what happens when this finally goes in. And as we know, CIG is quite good at going back and reiterating on existing gameplay loops. Salvage is still a very new thing, so I have no doubt that CIG will come back and hopefully they will go back on that decision and, and make some, uh, some other solution for it in the future. Other small news. Um, last week I talked about this new manufacturer that we saw on the Invictus launch week schedule. We now know it's called Misk um, Mirai, Mirai, which is going to be, uh, as I guess, a subsidiary under Misk uh, that's going to be focusing on high-performance ships. A lot of them is going to be racing. So, for instance, the Misk Racer is likely going to be rebranded under the Misk um, uh, Maria brand. And there's also going to be other ships that's going to come out um, under that brand. And we're actually getting one doing the Invictus launch week, which is the, the Maria Misk Fury um, so they're both doing racing, but also seem some military combat stuff. That's coming doing Invictus launch week, which is next Friday. Starting on Friday, there we have Invictus launch week. It's usually an awesome event, and it's taking place in Area 18 this year, and it's going to be a free fly. Going to be a great. So hope I'll see you guys for that event, which is going to run from, yeah, the 19th, and then I think until the end of the month. And finally, live streams. Um, my plan is to jump into the Star Citizen 319 PTU, a lot has changed with mining, and I have a ton of testing I need to do. I have some builds that I theorized and theory crafted. I want to go and test some of those mining builds, see how it works, test some different mining locations, and um, try to get some data, try to get some um, some feelings with how it works. But that's all going to happen tomorrow, as, as always, it is on YouTube, on Twitch, and it's going to be 7 o'clock GMT. Hope I'll see a lot of you guys there. Thanks all for watching. Also next time, I'll see you guys in space.